Alright, today we're going to do a top end rebuild on a Honda 50, uh, 49cc. So, we're going to need to take off the carburetor uh, right here, 8mm bolts. Take the exhaust off down here, two 10mm bolts, the spark plug, uh, just undo the cap there. These are 10 millimeter bolts. You'll have a brass washer down here on this one. This is your uh, oil return. Uh, these will be 10 millimeters here. Uh, this holds your tensioner chain that goes through. There's a little uh, wheel in there, plastic wheel. Uh, that's a 10 millimeter. Uh, this is your timing chain cover. Uh, it's 10 millimeter on the other side. It'll be this bolt right here. Sometimes you'll have oil coolers that come off here. This one don't have that kit. So anyway, we're going to start taking that apart. And uh, we're doing piston rings, cylinder. Uh, we're going to do uh, valves and valve seals all on this bike. Uh, so this will be race ready for this season for uh, Samantha and her kid. So uh, I got my two 8mm bolts off. Carbs loose after that. Uh, normally if you're doing something, I'd always stick paper towels in here. But I'm actually taking all this off to, to redo it so it's not major factor, but if uh, you weren't going to, make sure you put a paper towel in there. Uh, there's a 12 millimeter bolt back behind here, uh, right there. I went ahead and loosened it. My pipe popped down, so we're good there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna pull this 10 off, get to my timing gear, and this is a retaining bolt. When you're putting stuff back together, you'll use this to, to mount it anyway. Uh, 10s, 10, 10, coming off. Uh, I have a Folgers can to put all my stuff in. I uh, recommend if you don't know what you're doing or never done it before, you can put it in a row the way you took it off, or I've done it a few times, so I, I know what's going to work. Anyway, here we go. Alright, so I popped my cap off. I went ahead and just put the bolt back in. There's a gasket around the other side. There is a washer on this side of it, so don't forget about that. Uh, I went ahead and popped these loose. And uh, these are just a lot easier to get out with a screwdriver once you get going. So we'll pop them. Uh, all these are loose. And sometimes you can just tap that cap with something. Just like that. Try not to rip your gasket uh, if you're going to reuse it. Uh, I'm pretty sure I got all brand new gasket kit for this. Put it down here. Uh, I think those are 8 millimeters, so we'll need to pop them off. Your dot here is top dead center, and this notch here is top dead center. Uh, so just remember that when you're putting her back together. Right there is top dead center, and your cam will only go one way. So anyway, start taking her apart, and uh, we'll get back with you here in a second. When you're doing this cam gear, uh, this one happens to be 8 millimeter. I get it right to where it's uh, just starting to get tight. Now you don't have any pressure behind this cam, you're going to turn the motor. Uh, if you start just trying to wrench on it like a regular bolt. So I will sit there and just, uh, you can even use a rubber mallet or something and just pop that real quick and it'll, it'll bust that loose. You don't want to start sticking any screwdrivers or anything in their chain or that sprocket or anything. And, uh, so, and put it back on the same way. You can, uh, just smack the end with a rubber mallet and it'll give it enough tension. You might want to do it one or two times. And, uh, you want the same amount of pressure to put it back on as it took to get it off. Anyway, uh, that's how I do that. These are already loose now. I used a little poker and just grabbed that gear after I got them uh, nuts off, and it, or bolts, and they just popped right off. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to turn anything up, so I took the front fender off. It was going to hit, and I didn't want to have to bend it. Uh, so that's that. Anyway, we're going to cut the head off. As you can see, that... Heck, I don't know if you can see. Anyway, pretty charcoal in there. I imagine that... I have to deflate the front tire too. Um, anyway, oops, charcoal in there. Uh, we'll get it all fixed up. Lots of carbon buildup. Uh, we're gonna get that fixed. It'll all be nice and clean when we're done. Piston just looks horrible. I mean, there's chunks. Pretty sunny out here. I don't know if you can see it or not. Anyway, we got new stuff to go on there. Here we go. Oh, take off this tin. There's a wheel inside there, and uh, you've already took this off, and that'll be the only thing holding the cylinder on. When you 
you take that wheel out, uh, this is the one the wheel rides on, so remember that when you're putting it back in. There's a little rubber wheel in there. You can use a poker to pull it out if you need to. Just going to show you on this one. Here's where we had a failure. Uh, the rings are actually just sitting right on the piston. There's no flex left in them at all. So oil is going right by there and, and just burning up. So we're going to put some new stuff on there. There we go. All right, make sure when you do this, you go back and scrape all that gasket off. Get it real good and clean. Uh, before I put it back together, I'd even spray it with some carb cleaner. Uh, and then I always put a little bit of gasket to... Uh, I use like the Yama Bond or something like that, the uh, Gray Permatex, uh, when I go back with this stuff. So, anyway, uh, do that. Uh, I'm going to get the pin out now. This is a good time to use needle nose pliers or even one of these little pokers. We'll get that out. Uh, or, excuse me, there's a, a C, C ring in there to get the, the pin out. So, that's where we're at. Alright, I'm going to work on getting the valves and stuff out. Uh, I have to take this cover off right here two eight millimeter bolts, one there and one there. And uh already got them loose. But the stuff came in. Works good for this. I believe the gasket set has got all new stuff in there. Rubber side of the hammer. Pop that off, we'll go from there. Those are threaded down in there. So I've actually made me a special tool, and uh, you'll take this nut off, you'll screw, uh, put this in between your nut and this head right here, that'll keep it a uh, nice flat spot, and uh, screw this into that deal, and then you can just take and tighten this onto there and that'll pull that shaft out. And uh, sometimes they're actually loose enough where you can just pull them out. This one I got lucky. so. You can always check that first. But this, uh, I just went. I took the, one of these heads down to the uh, hardware store and found the right bolt that would fit. I don't remember what size it is, but anyway. And they both came out real easy. So sometimes it's easy, sometimes it ain't. Just depending on how hot the head's got and how old the bike is, I imagine. We've got that done. These rocker arms will come right out. I believe these were like 17 millimeters. Take the caps off. Sometimes these rocker arms will be distinguished between uh, exhaust and intake, so be careful on that. Cam comes out after that, and we're ready to get to our valves. Uh, I'm going to show you a really cool trick on doing these valves. Get you some paper towels. Hold on for a second. Stick you a little wad of paper towels underneath there. Uh, get you a nice big socket like that. And you can actually pop them off with a hammer. I'll be right back. Put paper towels in there to support that valve. Usually you can pop these real good. And they pop out. You want to have the cushion on your valve so you don't bend it or anything like that. And you don't want to smack it real hard, you just want that spring to pop so you can get those clips out. valve goes to which one. Got that out. As you can see, the exhaust side's a little bit dirty on that seat. That intake actually looks really good. Looks real good. Like somebody's put new stuff in it here lately. But anyway, exhaust don't look good, so that's part of the problem too. We're gonna get this all cleaned up. Here we go. 
here's the intake hole. We've got a lot of aluminum there. There's the exhaust hole. There's a lot there too. I think we're going to do something a little special for Samantha and her son. We're going to port this thing out a little bit. Yeah, ought to run a lot better. So we're going to work on that. Yeah, I took two different sandstones and uh, put a good honing in there. Uh, port anyway. Got it a lot not bigger. I'm going to go back with this. I made a special tool on the end that's got a slit and I'll run some 150 sandpaper on my air machine. It's going to smooth out the rest of that and uh, we'll let you check it out here in a minute. Alright, I'm going to reseat these valves uh, and put a little grind, valve grinding compound on there. I'll slip her down into the hole like that. Uh, some of these you can't get a tool to. That one's all the way down in there. And being that I'm a redneck, I went and got some bent hose. And you can sit there and shove that down over that valve stem core like that. And uh, all I gotta do is turn on my drill and just pull a little bit of back pressure on it. You still see, I'm gonna hold my finger on the uh, head of the valve. Uh, that's how I'm going to seat it. Uh, won't take very long. All right. So we've got both them seated and they're nice and shiny there. And uh, we'll go back and wash this whole thing out with soap and water. Uh, and then I'll go back and spray it off with uh, some carb cleaner or uh, dump some gas or something like that over it to get all any kind of water off of it. Uh, but uh, this thing's about ready to go back together. We'll have to make sure we clean all that stuff up real good, too, with some carb cleaner, which I need to go buy some. So uh, that's it for now. I'm going to buy some carb cleaner. All right. I don't have any valve seals in here. Uh, even the retainer rings are gone out of here. Uh, all the valves, everything's out of here. Uh, I've cleaned. Uh, I did some porting in there. Uh, you want to leave the intake a little bit rough. It'll bust up the fuel and help it mix better. Uh, so anyway, that's what I did. And uh, probably increased the hole by at least 20%. And uh, so I'm going to set this down. I got some good carb cleaner. I'm just going to basically just rinse that whole thing off through those uh, valve seals and everything. Make sure you get in where you have your valves because uh, if you didn't even grind it, you don't want any of that in there uh, when you get this thing back together. So, uh, early. Don't be cheap. I'm going to turn this camera off and get it even better. My rebuild kit, it's got some valve seals. Need to put those in. Two handed. Get in there with your. You just push it down with your fingers. And it's on. Use just a smidge of oil. Let me use just 10 W30. I'm just going to put barely a smidge on that seal. That way we got a little lubrication. All right, uh, I sprayed all this stuff down real good with uh, carb cleaner. These are your valve seats. They actually go right in that little groove over there. I'm sit down there. The valve spring seats. Let's go there. Right. Springs in. Uh, when you do this. Do one at a time. Get your water piece of paper. Figure out which valve you're going to put in first. We'll do the intake, the bigger valve. Okay. Put some paper underneath your head. That's going to support that valve from dropping down. Alright, so I've got the paper and under my cylinder holding my valve up. Got the valve 
sitting there. Put your seat in there. And this, what I do, just take and put your keepers in there. And they'll actually fit. Great, got that one upside down. Alright, so I put my two keepers in. You can actually see the valve stem down there. And I'm going to take this socket right here. I'm going to press down really hard, and you can usually feel it catch. Alright, to get these back in, uh, I ended up using my specialty tool. I put that in there. I go from the inside of the head and make sure the keepers go in. Use the C clamp. Uh, so that's how I got those in. Now we're going to put the uh, cam back in, and then we'll put the rocker arms back in. Cam goes in first. And I just want you all to know that I clean this off really good. Just put a rocker arm in there. And I think we can actually put this 180 degrees off. So let's make sure we put that on the right way. Uh, The intake would be that would be intake exhaust top dead center top dead center should be somewhere in there all right Okay, I got both those in. You'll know you got them in because they'll actually stick out of that hole and you won't be able to put the head on unless you got them in right. And, uh, valves seem good. I may have to loosen that one a little bit. Anyway, uh, we'll get uh, that cleaned up with a razor blade and get ready to put her back together. Uh, they didn't give me a gasket for the oil cooler, so I put some Yama Bond on it and cleaned that off real good. Uh, so, what the Reuse that one. No big deal though. It'll be alright. Drop that on the ground first. Alright, putting it back together. There we go. Alright, when you're putting a piston together, you've got, uh, this is a four stroke. You've actually got five rings. You got two real little bitty thin ones. These go to your oil ring. One goes on both sides of this. Uh, some of these oil rings will have a little Put down at the back side of them, and that oil, these two rings will sit on top of this one. This one does, so you'll have to put this one in first. Uh, then those two will sit on the side. You've got a darker one that's thicker, and then uh, one with a shiny coat on it. This one will be your middle ring, and this one goes on the top for your compression ring. Uh, anytime you got markings on these, which you can't really see, but it says standard on there, those will go up. Uh, when you position these on your piston, this is the way I would do it. Uh, you know, I'd have one there. I'd even put this one about there. And, of course, this being all on the same piston, you know, and do something like that. And the whole point in that is you don't want air coming up and oil coming up. So if you pivot them, change the position on them, you'll have more compression. Uh, so anyway, we'll put this together and I'll show you. Be real careful when putting these rings on. Uh, they break real easy, but a lot of times you can take. And I'm actually sliding that one over the bottom of that oil ring there, and it it sat down in there. I've got this gap right here on this one. I'm gonna take this gap and I'm gonna put it on the opposite side of the piston. Like I said, be real gentle with these because they break pretty easy. You can put leverage on the back side here, and that'll bring that lip up for you to be able to pop that onto the next groove, too, if you can get a hold of it. And so I'm just side the motor is easy to get to with the dowel pin. The exhaust is on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and put my clip in there, too. It's just easier to do it now than it is later. And it ain't that easy half the time.
a lot of times you can find that groove right there and it's in well almost you gotta pop it out right there okay so we're ready to go alright All right, I got that face cleaned off real good uh, piston right here intake is up exhaust is down uh, I've already put my pin in there I don't have it pushed all the way it's just a lot easier that way and uh, I don't know if I can do it one hand or not uh, grab your other clip and needle nose and slide that in just like you did the other side and we'll go from there so alright we'll go with our gasket next it's got a ceiling on that side it just goes right over here like this uh, a lot of times I even tie the timing chain up. I've got a little pair of alligator clips here. Uh, I didn't do it this time though. But anyway, I'm gonna have to take set this down. But I'm gonna slide that gasket over that piston and put that chain through there without getting everything all oily. So that's what you need to do. You got two rubber seals here. The smaller one goes in between your block and your cylinder. It's an oil seal. This one goes between the head and the cylinder. Uh, it's actually got a piece of metal in it. Don't forget to put that on there. You're going to have problems. All right, now we're putting the cylinder on. I'm going to use a little bit of lube on this cylinder. Uh, and I'm going to blow it out and shoot carb cleaner all over it make sure it's good and clean. Uh, this has a little bit beveled, so when you go to do this, you can just shake it a little bit, and those rings will usually seat up in there. Be careful. You can snap rings really easy doing this part. So uh, I'm going to go clean this out with carb cleaner and blow it out, and uh, we're going to mount it up. got my gasket on there, chains through there. i got my rubber uh, uh, seal there. Uh, i got my cylinder on here, and I just dipped my finger in a little bit of oil here and just did the very front of that cylinder, and that way when that piston goes in, all that will be lubricated, number one, when it first starts off, uh, and number two, it's going to help that slide in a lot easier. Make sure that your piston rings are, are not uh, lined up and they're staggered. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put this puppy back together. So uh, here we go. Alright, so all I did was sit there and jiggle this cylinder back and forth, made sure that uh, piston was even with the cylinder and it, it went ahead and slid on in. Uh, you can take an alligator clip or something like that. Alright, make sure when you get your, uh, putting your stuff back together, you've got some little uh, keepers here. Keep the head right. And there's one up top there, and then there's one down the bottom here. The other one in, it was stuck in that head. Luckily, I have a few extras in my collection. Uh, we need to put our wheel back on, and that's our little runner, and that washer goes on that too. Make sure it's all cleaned off uh, before you put it back on. We'll do that now. You can also put your 10 millimeter bolt back in. It goes right there. And it's the one with the screw head. Uh, if you were to use uh, gasket stuff, uh, this would help smash that back down. So go ahead and put that in. And we're going to put that wheel back in right now, too. If I'm doing this wheel, I'll hold it right here. And I can just start pushing this with my finger until I get where I can see my hole right there. And I can put my bolt in. So. Just that simple. Hold on to that and push it with your thumb. Hopefully your fingers are long as mine. You'll figure it out. Alright, I got my head back on. Uh, I've got my marks lined up. There's a little dot wherever it went. Right there. The head's right there. Got my tin back on there. Still gotta put those caps on, the rest of the stuff on. Uh, I'm gonna work on getting this. Uh, Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and put this cap on here. Uh, I washed off the side of this and cleaned it off real good. Uh, remember when you put this back on? Alright. Uh, like earlier when I was telling you, one of these is actually brass. The rest of them are all just regular. This brass one goes to this bottom left is where your oil goes. It gets real hot and it expands and contracts. So that's your brass one. The rest of them are chrome. Put her back together. Going from there. Alright. See you in a minute. All right, the quickest way for me to set this is uh, I took the spark plug out on the other side, and uh, I just barely stuck this in here. If you ain't done this before, 
just be real dang careful. That piston comes all the way up. You can start busting stuff. But I put an 8 millimeter on there after I got those tight, and I just slowly smidge. And I, I am at top dead center. My piston ain't quite there right now, but uh, we're good. So we're going to put the caps back on. Uh, I've already tightened these up. Um, not sure what the PSI is. I've just been doing it so long uh, that I know how to do it. So go back and double check all your bolts and uh, put our caps back on, our car back on. We should be good. I got my carb hooked back up, got all my bolts put back on, my exhaust put back on, I tightened all this up, uh, put the air filter back on, everything should be good to go. I tightened up the exhaust on the bottom and in the back, uh, we should be able to start this sucker, so uh, here we go, see what happens.